Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. This speed build was inspired by the latest Sims 4 expansion pack, Lovestruck. Thank you EA Creator Network for providing me with a copy of the pack. So I decided to build like an oceanfront romantic holiday house with some really unique architectural features. It's a very loosely Mexican inspired. Um, and I also used inspo pics of Bali Villas because they have some really stunning holiday homes over there. This holiday home is super luxurious. It's like a true getaway. I imagine it to be like a honeymoon destination. It's very secluded. It's like at the very top of this hill and there's just just like a cliff surrounding you so there's no you know riffraff around you you can just truly enjoy being with your boo it's not the largest home but it's the perfect amount of space for a loved up couple the game also got updated with round pools so i really wanted to include more than one really nice pool i wanted the house to open out directly into the pool out the back and you know out into that view and i also gave myself a huge challenge of designing a round pool situated upstairs in the corner of the house at the front of the house. My vision was just to create this ultra elegant getaway with many different spots to sit down and lounge and relax. And the overall like design theme ethos of this build was just to blend a more rustic and traditional vibe with like a modern luxury. So the look of the house is very much just fresh whitewashed walls with natural timber accents. There's lots of curves and organic lines. Well, like as much as I could manage because we all know The Sims 4 really hates um, curved lines and round rooms. So I did the best I could with our limited capabilities. The color palette is very neutral, but there are a few pops of color throughout that come from um, some of the furniture and the plants. There's heaps of plants. If you know me, you know I just love doing a jungle oasis vibe no matter what the build is so yes there's heaps of plants because the color palette is quite simple and minimal i thought i could try to bring in lots of different textures and the finishings and the furnishing um just to bring a bit more visual interest also when i started this build it was when the expansion pack had just come out and tool mod and better build by mod had not been updated yet which is fine of course but it just meant that yeah, I didn't have those tools when I first started this build, but the mods did get updated later on. But honestly, it wasn't a big deal. I didn't really miss Toolmod that much just because this build isn't overly complex. And I usually use Toolmod the most when I'm cluttering and putting finishing touches on. So I had Toolmod at that stage, so it was fine. So as you can see, I started off just sort of figuring out the layout of the house since it is kind of unusual. I started off just placing a few bits of furniture just to create that bare bones layout and block out the spaces before um, I got into the more detailed decorating. I played around a lot with the round corner rooms and the round pools. I wanted this house to be asymmetrical and modern but still have that villa hacienda vibe very indoor outdoor living multiple balconies lots of wide open doors open flowing spaces a lot of real life villas in mexico and bali have thatched roofing so i thought that was something a little bit different that i could try and i think it ended up looking really cool for this build and it provided a really cool contrast for the modernness of the structure so downstairs we've got the living spaces there's three outdoor lounge spaces bit overkill i know but there's one at the front one that opens out from the kitchen and there's also a deck by the pool we've got a formal ish living room inside by the entrance and then we've got a stunning kitchen and bathroom as well downstairs. Upstairs there is the sole bedroom. It's a very generously sized room with an ensuite and its own balcony as well. And of course there are huge windows everywhere so you can enjoy the ocean views. There's also the very top floor. The section was very much improvised. I didn't plan to have um, a rooftop deck, but I really wanted to have that upstairs infinity pool moment. So I was kind of forced to add in an upper floor. So it ended up just being an additional space for a relaxation. Stairs are also always a little bit tricky for me. So I just kept it simple. I love that it overlooks the kitchen and we've got that double height ceiling. It just makes the space feel so much 
much larger and that's pretty much the shell and layout of our house done. I started roughly decorating our bedroom, just trying to figure out color schemes. For the entire upstairs, I did a pale timber floor. This house for me was very much just keeping the walls and the flooring white and plain as like a very blank canvas. And I wanted the decor and the textures to bring the character. I ended up doing dark blue as the accent color throughout the house actually. The Lovestruck expansion pack also came with some interesting new shower windows and sliding doors so I thought I'd try them out. You can see I was trying to bring some rustic vibes with the tiles but I really like how we ended up with the slightly more new looking tiles. I think bathrooms should just always feel very new and clean and shiny. It just makes me feel better personally. And with that upper floor I decided that could be where you got massages and you could do yoga. So now I'm moving on to properly furnish and decorate downstairs. I've done stone flooring throughout with stucco walls. Like I said, I just wanted to keep it a blank canvas so we can use some of the new furniture from the pack and the decorations that are a little busier with their prints and patterns. I actually didn't really mind that the stone felt a little bit cold. I put lots of like candles and little mood lighting around to bring the warmth. And yeah, I think I ended up deleting all of the little saucer ceiling lights except for in the bathrooms. With this entrance, I don't really know what came over me, but I was just really itching to do an entrance with yeah, a curved wall moment and just have a very open concept and bring a big wow moment. I wanted the entrance to appear quite hidden when you're outside so it'd feel more like a special secluded hideaway when you turn around the corner. I knew I wanted to have heaps of vegetation and make it feel like a lush jungle, you know, that is my MO. I love these hanging lights. I decided to do blue and that kind of ended up dictating the entire color scheme um, and yeah, most of the accent colors in the house ended up being blue. I was kind of building all these downstairs living lounge spaces at the same time since they all comprise of similar types of furniture they're all just lounges coffee table etc so yeah i have been scrolling through the sofas then see an item that suited the inside living room or the back deck better so that's why i'm jumping around a little bit I will say the amount of lounges in the home is definitely a bit overkill. We've got three outdoor lounge spaces. I mean, that is just too much. But this is a holiday home and the goal is to relax. So that's why I've done that. I absolutely love how the kitchen turned out. So I'm just choosing some knickknacks to decorate our shelves and our counters. I just love that dark stone feature wall we did with the illuminated open shelving open shelves is such a holiday house thing in my opinion because in real life they're just so impractical having to always make sure they look nice and neatly displayed. I just love how we've got this moody kitchen which contrasts the you know very bright white open spaces in the rest of the house. I love those big hanging lights and our double height ceiling. Oh, I just love it so much. I would love to have this kitchen. And because our ceiling is so high, it gave me the opportunity to use this tall palm tree plant that we normally don't get to use indoors. And yeah, as usual, I just think that the plants always help to tie together a space. It's probably my number one decoration tip just add plants moving on to our backyard this is very much an indoor outdoor moment with our dining room opening out directly onto the patio I did the archways around the patio to make it feel a bit more enclosed but you've still very much got that view of the ocean and the pool I also ended up getting rid of that roof awning at the back because it was actually causing clipping on the inside even though roofs shouldn't clip on the inside but it's just the sims um, and yeah I just didn't really think we needed it. I changed up the timber deck and placed a pergola down for some shade rather than having this just like open expanse. I moved some of the seating out from the patio onto the beach deck and I think that separation of space turned out much nicer. I felt like the other side of the building was looking a bit plain so I just did a little tropical garden along the side and it peeks over a little bit so you can see it from the backyard and it just gives a little bit more of an oasis vibe when you're in the pool I think. 
Another really good tip for achieving better realism with your builds is to use the terrain brushes and shade under your plants and outdoor furniture. It adds a bit more dimension. And if you think about real life, furniture on grass usually does cause some wear and tear. So always use terrain brushes. Now with our downstairs bathroom, initially I wanted it to just be a powder room with a toilet and sink only, but I decided to change the layout since it's a pretty big room and there's definitely enough space for a shower. So I just shuffled everything around a little bit. Plus I figured if you wanted to shower off after a swim, you wouldn't have to go all the way upstairs. I struggled a bit matching colors and metallic tones in this little bathroom, which is why I opted to go with the towels on the stool rather than a towel rack. I just couldn't find a towel rack that looked right. I struggled big time with this bedroom. I just didn't have a clear vision of what I wanted and the result is hours of footage that I had to cut out of me playing around with different beds and bedside tables and hanging lights. It was like actually comical how much time I spent trying out different combinations and in the end I just reverted back to the original bed <laughs> and hanging overhead light. <sighs> I tried to make a fancy custom bed head and I tried like floating bedside tables, tried putting different artwork above the bed and all this stuff, but nothing was really giving that clean, luxurious look that I wanted. But in the end, I went back to the original bed and light that I had. I went with my gut and just kept it super minimalist and just let the space breathe. The big challenge of this bedroom and the ensuite was just, yeah, trying to find that balance between rustic but luxe. Because I just think a honeymoon, holiday home, the bedroom has to be luxurious. So I've added some soft brushed gold metallics, which I think mixed well with the timber furniture. I also love this ensuite bathroom. It's got a double shower, a bathtub, and all these fancy soaps and amenities. And the bathroom opens out to its own mini little balcony which faces the front of the lot. So I've just added some finishing touches around with some artwork and mirrors, just made sure all the lighting throughout the house looked good. I also forgot to mention those amazing timber ceiling beams that came with the Lovestruck pack. I used them in the downstairs outdoor patio and even did a beam in the bedroom just to delineate the space a bit. But yeah, that item was definitely one of the highlights of the Lovestruck Build By catalog my opinion. And now our upper level, it's like our little zen zone. It's got double massage beds for a couple's massage. There's plenty of space on the rooftop terrace for yoga and lounging and swimming and that beautiful infinity pool. I also added in those counters since we're two floors above ground level. I felt there should probably be some storage and a sink um, and a fridge up there so you don't have to run down to fetch drinks or snacks. Now my absolute favorite feature of this house by far are these hanging plants at the front. I mean how cool is it that it hangs off the infinity pool? I'm not sure if this design could ever work in real life but I am just so happy with how I was able to execute my vision. I've just used the same plants in all the little garden spaces, the vertical garden and the ground floor gardens are all the same plants so it all just feels very cohesive. I've also just done another small garden at the front as well as a little pebble path. I used some fencing from Live Edit, which I thought was just perfect for this look. I won't lie, this part was definitely a little bit of an afterthought, but I think it does help bring the beachy vibes. And that is our finished build. I absolutely love the way it turned out. I feel like I was really able to bring my vision to life and it's always very satisfying when you can do that. Make sure you leave a comment and let me know what you think about this build. And don't forget to like and subscribe. This house is also now on the gallery. My EA name is Meg Builds. Thank you so much for watching. I'll let you enjoy the rest of these reveal shots and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.